Hello, welcome to Merchant of Venice, Act 5, Scene 1, and this is the only scene in Act 5. This is the end of the play. Everything gets wrapped up right here, and of course, everyone will live happily ever after because this is a comedy, right? Um, in Romeo and Juliet, it was a tragedy. Therefore, people died at the end. This, no one dies. People live happily ever after. Um, we are back at Belmont. Everybody comes together at Belmont. We have Jessica and Lorenzo talking about things. Um, messengers show up to announce the arrival of people. Um, we have the theme of music taking over for a little bit. Portia arrives shortly after that. Bassanio arrives. And then they get into a nice little argument. Um, we are really interested with those rings. Shakespeare has a way of putting this in here. And then everything's resolved and the play ends happy, and I'll have a little bit of commentary about Shakespearean comedy in just a moment. Okay, let's look at this. At the start of this scene, Jessica and Lorenzo are trying to out-knight each other, right? In a night such as this, the moon is shining and the wind is kissing the trees. And in such a night did, and they start talking about all these famous lovers in famous wars and stuff. And so there's a little bit of humorous tension between the two, and they're trying to one-up each other's stories of love and companionship as they're comparing their tales with each other. And when things kind of get interesting, right, in such a night did Lorenzo swear he loved her, talking about Jessica, and Jessica's like, in such a night did the pretty Jessica slander her love, and he forgave her. And we're like, wow, what's going on with the slandering and not saying things correctly? And once we get to that point of their out knighting each other, messengers show up and interrupt them. Stefano comes by and he comes to announce that Portia is returning from the monastery. And then he wants to know if Bassanio has returned yet, and no. And then Lancelot comes up with his sola -ing. Um, He shows up and he's like, sola, sola, what ho, ho, sola. And it's really silly. It's dark, right? And he's trying to get their attention, and he's screaming this. And a lot of times when this play is performed, um, Lancelot can't see anybody. And he's talking to a bush, and Lorenzo's on the other side of the bush talking to him about stuff. So he gets the message that Bassanio will be here soon. So people are going to start showing up. Lorenzo thinks it's a good idea to have music playing when people show up. Music is wonderful. Think about your life. Does music have any role for you. Do you listen to it in the morning? Do you listen to it at night? Um, what music do you like to listen to? Why do you listen to it? Does it change your mood? Someday I may talk about the doctrine of ethos and music changes us when we listen to it. And so they talk about music and they talk about what it will mean and it will be like angels welcoming Portia home. It will be heavenly music while Lorenzo and Jessica lay under the stars. And Jessica makes an interesting statement. She's never happy with music. Music reflects our inner soul. So maybe there's something with Jessica that isn't right. Uh, Lorenzo explains she should listen with different ears. Um, we should just listen and not judge from our inner selves and just enjoy the music. So we have some nice commentary. Feel free to read that through slowly and see if there is any meaning for you and the importance of music in those pages. And this music, of course, plays through Portia's arrival. And she shows up. It's good to be home. She sees the lights in the distance. It's good to be home. She hears the music. And this music is always sweet. That's interesting. More with this musical theme. 
music is always sweet and even bad music is good if you don't pay attention to it right if you're not paying attention to it it's just background noise but it's still melodic it still affects us a bit and we have this interesting analogy between the lark and the crow a lark makes beautiful bird noises and a crow makes kind of scratching not so beautiful bird noises but if you're not paying attention you can't tell the difference and one is as good as the other and as they are listening to the music as they are coming home they stumble across jessica and lorenzo lying on the grass um waiting for them to show up and when they talk Portia announces that no one at all is supposed to mention their absence. Remember, they were gone. And Bassanio is going to be coming soon. So, no one's supposed to tell Bassanio that Portia and Nerissa were gone. Bassanio sh sh shows up shortly after that. Um, Portia welcomes him by being light. Um, but she doesn't want to be too light to make light of a situation or not take his coming home seriously. Um, Shakespeare uses light and music a lot in his plays. If you remember Romeo and Juliet, light was the symbol of beauty. Antonio is introduced and Portia welcomes him as well. So he is a friend. Interesting how Portia introduces him. Bassanio introduces him to Portia, says, Give welcome to my friend. This is the man. This is Antonio to whom I am so infinitely bound. Right? He is bound to Antonio. They have this bond, if you will. And Antonio says, I am well acquitted of him, meaning he doesn't owe me anything more. I don't owe him. We're even. So he gets welcomed. And as Portia is welcoming Antonio, Nerissa and Graciano are in the distance. And as they are in the distance, they start arguing. And Graciano and Nerissa are arguing about their ring. Um, Graciano interrupts their conversation. He says, by yonder moon, I swear that you do me wrong. In faith, I gave it to a judge's clerk. So this is interesting. By yonder moon, I swear. This is right out of Romeo and Juliet. If you haven't noticed, Shakespeare likes reusing some lines. And Graciano is swearing that he didn't give it to anybody else. He didn't give it to a girl, which is what Nerissa is accusing him of. Of course, Graciano did give it to a girl. He gave it to Nerissa. So we have this little argument. And Portia tells Graciano, this is your fault. You should have kept it, right? And she comes out to say that my husband made a similar oath with this ring, and I'm sure he still has it. And Bassanio has his little aside saying, Oh, I wish I'd cut off my hand so I could lie and say I lost my hand defending the ring. So that's interesting how Bassanio immediately goes to a lie for his defense. Everything he's done so far in this play has been a lie. He dressed up as a rich, wealthy person. He's not rich and wealthy, right? He had to borrow the money from Antonio. And then Tony had to borrow the money from Shylock, which created all sorts of problems. Be honest. But no, he wished he had another proof of a lie so he could say he didn't lose the ring and give it away. And what's interesting, as soon as he says this aside, Graciano throws him under the bus. Right? Graciano just comes out and says, My Lord Bassanio gave his ring away to the judge who begged it. <laughs> well, what are friends for, right? So Graciano spills the beans and tells Portia that Bassanio gave his ring away as well. Portia gets upset at this, accuses him of having a false heart, and she vows that she will never come to his bed again. She will never sleep with him again. 
The Sanyo, of course, is bereft by this. Holy cow, he begs that she won't be so angry. If she only knew the person who deserved this ring, and that person, of course, was the lawyer at the trial, which, of course, was Portia. So we know everybody's secret identity here, but poor Bassanio, poor Antonio, poor Graciano, they don't know. And we know that they're all being taken for a ride. So this is really kind of funny stuff with a lot of dramatic irony involved in it. Um, Portia retorts him when Bassanio says, you shouldn't be so angry, it's just a ring. She says, you should not have given it a ring unless you fully understood your oath. Do you really know how powerful this love is when you say it? And then she says, right, I would bet my life that you gave this ring to a woman, which is what Nerissa was saying to Graciano. And Portia's statement is true. Bassanio doesn't know this, of course. Bassanio protests that he gave the ring to a young doctor, a lawyer who helped Antonio. And their argument just keeps going on. And Portia makes an interesting statement. It's very inappropriate. She says that if that doctor shows up with a ring, she will sleep with the doctor because he has that ring, right? The sign of her love. And Nerissa promises the same thing. So now these new wedded wives are promising to sleep with other men who own basically the wedding rings that their husbands gave away. So this is <laughs> really kind of funny. We know what's going on. Antonio interrupts and says, you know, this is all my fault. And they're like, no, don't worry about this. And then Bassanio goes to swear his love for his wife. No, I really do swear you, swear to you that I love you. Um, and when he does this, let's see, Bassanio's oath. In the hearing of my friends, everybody can hear me, I swear to you, Portia, I swear to thee, even by thine own fair eyes, wherein I see myself. So I swear by your beautiful eyes, where I can see myself. And Portia just stops him. Mark you with that. She, she calls him two-faced. In my eyes, you can see two of yourself, because I have two eyes. She's calling him two-faced. You're a liar. I don't want to hear it. So that's kind of interesting that she calls her husband two-faced. And we're getting to the point, and we're asking ourselves, how far will Portia and Nerissa carry on this ruse? It's starting to become uncomfortable. Antonio swears that he'll never push Bassanio to give anything away again. Give Bassanio a second chance. And so Portia says, okay, here, Antonio, you take this ring and give it to Bassanio and make him promise never to lose it. And you will be my insurance agent in this to make sure it happens. So Portia gives Antonio this ring. And Antonio goes to Bassanio and says, Here, Lord Bassanio, swear to keep this ring. And as soon as Bassanio looks at it, he's like, Holy cow, that's the same ring I gave the doctor. And he doesn't know what's going on. And before he can figure things out, Portia says, I had it of him. Pardon me, Bassanio, for by this ring, the doctor lay with me. So she's saying, I slept with the doctor that you gave this ring to. And that's how I got it back. Holy cow. Imagine being newlywed before you had your honeymoon night. And then your spouse saying they've slept with someone else between the wedding and your honeymoon. And that's what's going on here. We know it's not true. And yet, these poor husbands are in such a shock. Um, Nerissa says she did the same thing. Graciano is in a tizzy. He's all upset. And they keep on arguing. And then eventually, we get to the ending where Portia's like, you know what? Psych. <laughs> it's all a joke. And to explain it, she says, you know, Lorenzo and Jessica will say that I was at a monastery. Here's a letter confirming that. Oh, and speaking of letters, um, Jessica and Lorenzo, here is the deed to Shylock's house for when he dies. It's yours. Um, also, Antonio, here's a letter for you. And this letter states that your ships did come in. You are 
wealthy again. And the play ends. And we have a classic Shakespearean comedy in which people from different groups and cultures get together and they live happily ever after. Antonio is rich, right? His ships came in. He lives happily ever after. Lorenzo and Jessica live happily ever after, and they will have their father's blessing. Um, Portia and Bassanio, now that the rings are all settled, will live happily ever after. Nergrissa and Graciano, of course, will live happily ever after as well. Shylock has been welcomed into the Christian community. In Shakespeare's day, this was something to laugh at. He's now a Christian, yay! He's one of us, ha ha ha. Today, we after the Holocaust, this isn't funny. Okay, so this is kind of a problem comedy, as it's called. Um, and we go through cycles in our society where certain things are funny, and then after a while, they are not. Okay, um, look at any racist joke, and there was a time when those were kind of funny, and now they're just inappropriate and wrong. So this play is classified as a problem comedy, because in Shakespeare's day, it was funny that Shylock became a Christian. Now it's just kind of awkward. Um, let me talk a little bit about Shakespeare and comedies. And this play hit it really, really well. A Shakespearean comedy, you have the boy and you have the girl. And they want to get together. But there's something in the way. Something blocking them from getting together. And then there is somebody that helps them around this. And then they get together. And everybody is happy. Right? That's a happy heart. Here Bassanio wants to get together with Portia. But the thing blocking them was this riddle. The way to get around it was Bassanio to dress up and get help from Antonio. And they got together and got married. Um, Shylock had problems with the Christian faith. And then they got around that because of the trial. And then Shylock was welcomed into the community. If you look at Romeo and Juliet, this play starts off as a comedy. You have Romeo wanting to get together with Juliet, but she's a Capulet. Friar Lawrence helps them around that problem, and then they get married. Except some things happen, and they all die in the end. So it becomes a tragedy. All right. That's pretty much how we're going to wrap up the play. So, check out that scene again. Have a great day, and feel free to laugh at all the ring jokes. Have a good one.